Good day to you. Painting an animal's eye in watercolor can be a challenging but rewarding project. I've chosen a tiger's eye for this tutorial. If you notice, this tiger's eye pupil is really small as compared to say a puppy's eye because the tigers are normally nocturnal and this photograph reference has been shot in daylight. And also it looks a bit ferocious because of the way the pupils are tiny compared to the iris and the contrast between the green and yellow iris and the black pupil. Also, one of the things that we notice in any animal or even human is that the lower lid portion is a tiny bit shiny and liquid. So we need to demonstrate that. In my study, I've taken a close up of a reference photo from stock footage, but you should actually change the amount of detail you paint depending on how close up your pet or animal's portrait is to you. If you're looking at an animal from a distance or in a larger landscape setting or composition, then you don't need to provide this much detail in your portrait. Here are some tips to help you get started. Firstly, gather your supplies. You will need watercolor paints, a set of brushes. In this case, a slightly larger round brush like a number four and a slightly smaller round brush like a number two. Watercolor paper and a reference image of a tiger's eye. I'm using a round brush with a good point, the silver uh, black velvet silver brush for this painting. Sketch out your composition. Use a pencil to lightly sketch out the basic shape of the tiger's eye on your watercolor paper. This will help you plan out the placement of the different elements of the eye. Optional step. After you've drawn the eye, if you have masking fluid, draw a thin line on the lower lid using a used ball pen or tip of pencil or a pointer, but never your good watercolor brush. Let it dry thoroughly, that is bone dry, before you start laying any water or painting paint on your painting. If you don't have masking fluid, not to worry. You can actually lift off the paint in the lower lid using a thin damp brush right at the end. We'll get to it. Next, mix your paint. Watercolor paint is transparent, so it's important to mix the right shades and values to create the desired effect. For our painting, we will need to mix shades of green, that is yellow green, lemon yellow, orange or rust, brown using burnt umber and a rich black using a 50-50 mix of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Now with all these paints, I'm using a mix of, uh, that's a milky consistency. You can dilute it further or you can make it thicker. But in this case, at least for the initial layers, except for the black, I'm using milky consistency. The black is slightly thicker, like a thin cream consistency. Once you've mixed your paints and kept them ready on your palette, and you are sure that your masking fluid has dried off, paint the base layer. Using your the slightly larger round brush, start basing the painting the base layer of the tiger's eye. Use the lemon yellow, that is the lightest shade in your palette and using a very light touch, build up the layers of paint gradually to create a more realistic effect. You should start with the lemon yellow and then let it dry and then do the light green on top, let that dry and after that do the light brown or rust on the outer edges of the eye. Let this all dry well. Once it's dried, Paint the outer edges of the eyelid in dark paint, that is the equal mix of ultramarine and burnt umber. And then use a small brush like a pointed number four in order to paint the eyelid. Now this is only going to be the first layer of many layers. So remember that at this step, we're just literally marking the spots everywhere, but be careful and accurate here because of the dark color. Then add the pupil, that's the center of the iris on the top center of the painting inside the eye and using a small round brush the same uh, black velvet silver brush paint the pupil of the eye you can use the same rich black or you can use a really dark blue which is um, the same ultramarine with a tiny bit of the rich black added to it to create the pupil now remember that the pupil of the eye is literally like the camera lens it's an aperture so it needs depth and to do that, you have to do many layers and go deeper and deeper inside it. The closer up you have of the eye, the more time you'll need to add more layers. The further away it is in your composition, the less layers you need. After you've added the pupil and it's dried off, add more paint to the iris. 
So use the light uh, green paint in order to add more layers and add a few layers of this. Add the lemon yellow on the outer green on the inside and then the rust or the, I've used chronochrome rust but you can use any, any kind of orange on the outer side or light brown. And then once that's dried, you mix the dilute dark brown, green and black on your palette. Don't mix them together but use those use those dilute ones and take the very pointed end of your small brush to draw thin lines to show the patterns of the iris. So take your time with it. It won't take very long. It's after all only two eyes or one eye that you're doing in your painting and you don't have to rush this. So draw the thin lines, let it all dry. After all of this dries, add any further details. It could be um, reflections in the eye. In the tiger's eye, in the reference of photo, there is no reflection of anything in the eye because I doubt the photographer is going to be close enough to get the reflections of the eye in the tiger but if you do have a pet portrait or where in your photo it does have reflections or it has any other additions at this stage you can add that step back from your painting take a good look what else is needed take a comparison photo so take a photo of your progress and then take a photo of the tiger's eye like and compare the two using a Canva or any other app, photo collage app, see what else is needed, what else can be fixed or adjusted. So after you're fairly satisfied with this, let it all dry, walk away from it. Once it's dry, this is the time when you can remove that masking fluid that you applied early on after the sketch stage using, um, I've used a rubber cement pickup. This is like a plastic thing that you can use. Um, I don't use my fingernails because we have oil in our fingers um, and it might transfer the paint. But you can use fingernails or you can use um, you know, a little pick in some way in order to pick out the masking fluid. This will reveal really white paper. So now if you've used masking fluid, you need to use dilute, very dilute brown paint in order to slightly mute this darkness. Otherwise the contrast of that highlight will be too strong which is what I've done in this case to use dilute paint. Um, if you've not used masking fluid, this is the time to lift off the paint in the lower lid using a thin damp brush to give that same fluid look. Again, patience is key. Remember to take your time. It's a 10 second process, but if you hurry, then it can easily ruin your painting. So take your time. Remember, a liquid will reflect light, so giving this tiny highlight will bring dimension and depth to your painting. Now step back and enjoy your painting. And remember to take your time, wait for layers of paint to dry before moving to the next step and have fun with the process. With practice, you'll be able to create beautiful watercolor animal eyes in no time at all. With the animal eye, I'm also drawing the outer edges of the eye, so just to give a context. It's not necessary, but it, if you should draw it, it'll look nice. So I've drawn using the light ochre and the black stripes around the eye. So this is just to give an idea of the fur and the texture. You can use wet on wet the way I've done it in order to provide the context to the eye if you are drawing a tiger's eye. The other thing is that you can look at it is also the masking and the lifting can also be done in the middle of the eye where the pupil is. So just a glint of light, just to give some life to the tiger. So masking is on the lower lid and also in the center of the iris. Thank you, bye.